Yeah, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is David Gritton. I'm moderating this Q&A tonight uh, for members of BAFTA and for members of the Amer American Academy. And for those of you in the room who are awards junkies, it's probably worth saying that we have three Golden Globe nominees on stage tonight. Um, <laughs> On my immediate right, none of them really need any introduction, but on my immediate right, the legendary Judy Dench. <laughs> Next to uh, Judy, producer, screenwriter, and uh, let's see, what else did you do, Steve? Did a little bit of acting. You little, he did a little bit of acting, Steve Coogan. And next to Steve, his co-screenwriter, Jeff Pope. <laughs> I'm going to start off with Judy. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's fairly well known that you uh, accepted this role very quickly. I think Steve, Steve came to your house, read you the script, and very quickly you were on board. Uh, I just wonder why what it was that made you so eager to take this part? Was it the sort of light and shade in the character, or, or what? Well, li like a child, um, I, uh, I love to be told a story rather than... Well, I can't read it now anyway, because I can't see. But like a child, I love to be told a story, because that's ultimately what our job is. Our job, eventually, is whether it's a theatre of, of people in a, in a theatre or a cinema or whatever, is telling a story to somebody. and. Um, so Steve very kindly came down and uh, read me uh, quite an early draft, was it? Quite well, an I, I, did, I came down the first time and just told you the story over your kitchen table. And the second time I sat in the garden and sweated while I read the script. But, but the first time you, you, I, was just, I just told you it in, in your kitchen. And, and the telling of it was enough to make me want to do, to do it. So, you know... We, we made it up from there on, didn't we? <laughs> uh, <coughs> irresistible, I thought it was. Okay. Steve, you first came across this story. You read a story on the Guardian website, I think, didn't you, about um, Philomena Lee and Martin Sixsmith, and there was a picture that accompanied them, uh, that, that accompanied the story, and somehow that was that was enough to pique your interest. You took it from there, didn't you? Uh, yeah, well, yes, I, I was, I was, it was sort of twofold for me. I was looking for something different uh, on, a, on a sort of professional level. Try, I had my sort of feet, just my senses out looking for something. And, and, and I, I read this story and I found it very moving. And uh, I read it to my girlfriend and uh, I was in tears by the time I'd finished reading the article. And it, it uh, I don't know why it affected me because, of course, in the scheme of things, it's not particularly seismic. Uh, the story that, 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 that what, what befalls Philomena in, in the grand scheme of things, but um, but it affected me, and I think it was. I'm trying to think what it was. Um, I think it was something to do with the fact that she was the same age as my mother, and there was something. Although it was extraordinary what happened to Philomena, in many ways she's a very. Uh, I mean, she, she, she's there's a, there's a an ordinariness to her, uh, despite the extraordinary things that, that befell her that me meant that she could be, I think, I, I thought she could be anyone's mother, you know, uh, or, or anyone's grandmother, perhaps. And um, that, that sort of, uh, that resonated with me. Um, and and what, peculiarly, what it, although it was very tragic, I, and I felt sort of angry, as people do when they hear the story, there was a photograph of Martin and Philomena sat next to each other, not dissimilar to the poster, actually, for the film. And uh, they looked... They were laughing in the picture, and I, 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 it suddenly struck me: How did they get from, from uh, this? To, how did they arrive in that place? You know, where, where they're, they're laughing, and um, and I, so I just optioned the book. Um, I didn't quite know what to do with it. I didn't even think I was going to write it, and uh, I went to the BBC with Gabby Tanner, a producer. And we, I told the story. I just kept telling the story over and over, and, or as I saw it and the way of telling it which was, I wanted to tell the story of these two people in the photograph, um, really, which is uh, Martin 
this, this, they just look like a very odd couple. And uh, Christine Lang at the BBC said, you just need, you should write it, you need to find, I said, well, I, need, I can't do it by myself. And she suggested this, this guy, <laughs> Jeff Pope. <laughs> and, and that was, and really that was, um, that's, where, that's where it sort of took off properly as a script. And Jeff, when you came when you came on board, I mean, what did you what did you feel about the the material at, at, as it existed at that point? I mean, did you feel as, as though it this was the way this was the way forward to to do a you know both light and shade comedy and tragedy and a road trip and all of that? To begin with, it was um, Steve had got quite a, a strong idea of how he wanted to do it, which really um, stayed with us all the way through. I mean, the the the, the finished film is not a million miles from the way he saw it to begin with. What, um, what I suppose I brought to the process was having worked a lot on, um, on dramas based on true story, on factual drama, it was just the, um, the process of, of widening it out. And um, it was that discipline of we, we met Martin, we met Philomena, we met Jane, um, who was uh, Philomena's daughter. And... Um, read and read and read. I mean, Steve had bought the, uh, the book Sight Unseen. He'd not read the book. He, he was uh, grabbed enough by the, by the article to, to say, this, I know this is what I want to do. The whole theme of forgiveness emerged from a conversation with um, Philomena's daughter, Jane. And it, it, the, the conversation went something like um, Philomena telling us, she said, I've, I've forgiven them. I've forgiven them. I, I, I don't bear them any Ill, Ill, uh, Ill feeling anymore, I've forgiven them. And the, her daughter Jane said, I haven't. And um, uh, uh, in the film, we transpose that emotion to, to Martin. Um, and, and built to war, we, that was the other great thing about working with a, a story, that, a true story, where you know what the story is, is that uh, you know the universe. So once we, we knew the building blocks, and we knew that Philomena, towards the end of the film, it was about Philomena, this extraordinary act of forgiveness. And also, I've got to say, I've got to say, because when, we went, when I went out to Jude's house and told her this, uh, told her the story, went back to Jeff and said, look, I think we might have Judy Dench, as long as we don't produce a terrible script. Um, I think she's in. Um, and, um, and so then when we were continued writing it, we, we wrote it, didn't we, knowing that we had, as I turned to Jeff and said, look, we might have Judy Dench, let's not waste her. Let's get, <laughs> let's get our money's worth, you know. Um, so we, so we, we, we actually, uh, there's a couple of scenes in there where it's just when she retraces the Philomena's steps out to the courtyard, and at the end when, she, when you're looking at the TV screen, where no one can see your face, only the audience, and, 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 and it's your thoughts and the audience are privy to just you alone in that moment. And no other characters in the story are privy to that. So it makes really private moment between Philomena and the audience. And we knew that all, we didn't, wouldn't need any dialogue there. We could just, it, 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 we, we were specific about that. We, we just need the camera on Judy's face and that will tell a story by itself. Okay, and well you did very well indeed. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 We got our money's worth. <laughs> well, let's hear Judy's side of this story. Um, when, you, when you started to familiarise yourself with this script, did you, did you sort of feel as though Philomena was a character who you could know? Did she seem knowable to you? Did she seem familiar in any way? Well, um, luckily, uh, uh, you know, she's very much with us and uh, living <clears throat> north of London. And before we started filming, I got the chance to have lunch with her. But I just wanted to get a sense of her, of Philomena, and, um, and the type of person she was. And um, just, I, I, we just had a lunch where I watched her and listened to her and, uh, and heard what she was saying and asked her a few questions. But mostly, she, she's wonderful at actually speaking. There wasn't, a, there wasn't a day that I met her, and there were many days, that she didn't tell me about how much she loved him. And um, also that she, I mean, in the, the bit in the film where she says, you know, perhaps you could say this is by another person, <clears throat> and, um, but I don't really want it told at all. And she, she has said, reiterated so many times, I never even thought there would be a book, and I certainly never thought there would be a film about this. 
But, but you know, our, our responsibility was very, very much to her. And um, to tell somebody's story, not over-dramatise it, not under-dramatise it, but kind of tell it so that it's recognisable to, to, to her, um, was, was very important. And it's why, why S Steve and Jeff, I thought, wrote, wrote a wonderful screenplay, which I didn't understand how really... Abs I thought it was wonderful, but I didn't really understand how f fantastically precise it was um, <clears throat> uh, until I met Philomena myself and then realised uh, how, uh, how absolutely acutely they had written it. Did it help that you have Irish relatives? Just in the way that you, just in the way that... Oh, I think, oh speaks. yes, I mean, Must had she come from Cape Town, I wouldn't have played the part, no. I promise you. I wouldn't. <laughs> no, uh, uh, having an Irish mother and all my relations in Ireland, my father brought up there and everything, that was, that was good, that was grist to the mill, thank goodness. Um, and I also understood very much uh, <clears throat> her sense of humour. And her sense of humour was the first thing that struck me about her when I met her. What did, all of you really, what did, uh, what did Stephen Frears uh, bring when he came on? Because he came on later. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I figured that. Nothing. No. Um, no. No, Jeff? Steve, um, nothing, this, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> so Stephen actually, Stephen was very, Stephen was very good, and I'll tell you why. Because he, um, all his films, the common denominator of all his films is that they're all very different, and he he s sort of serves the material. He, I never felt at any point that he was resting this project from me and Jeff and said, right, it's mine now, I'm going to do what I want with it. All the way through, he was very collaborative, constantly asking me questions. He actually, well, he said to me, he said, I'm Jewish. He said, I don't, this is your world, because I am Catholic. Oh, well, was, let's not get into that. Um, <laughs> but uh, he, he, um, he, he, he said, this is your world, and, and he said, but I find it fascinating, so tell me about it. And he'd also, when he wanted clarity, he'd say, I don't understand, what does this mean? What does that mean? What's that trying to say? What's that about? So actually, in fact, his, his distance on it was, 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 was an asset. It, it, was the, it was the thing I, never having worked with Stephen before, it was the thing I found most interesting, was his absolute lack of any, um, uh, any, any ego, in that sense. He was... I don't understand this. He didn't care if, if it may have made him look dumb at that point, that he didn't understand something. <coughs> he didn't care. He said, I need to know. Uh, and also, f your image or your perception of Stephen is as, as a great auteur. Um, and and in, in one sense he is, but in another sense he's completely opened the whole thing up. He would ask the, uh, you know, the wardrobe assistant, what do you think? Uh, of course, Stephen yeah. and Judy, but it was completely collaborative. He, he would, he would uh, walk through, uh, ask questions about um, uh, things that he, he didn't understand. He'd, he'd, um, he, he was quite a hard taskmaster early on with the script. He'd say, what's this scene for? And we don't need that, and blah, blah, blah. And, um, and what's this for? Uh, and quite, in quite a grouchy sort of manner, actually. But, um, but uh, we, once I realized that he's just very defensive, he just wants, he's like a, some angry dog that wants its tummy tickled, basically. Um, uh, and he, uh, he was, he Don't was, we all? yeah, yeah. But um, he, he was very, he actually made us do things with absolute clarity. And then in the edit, I remember I went in, he said, what do you think about this? And I said, well, I, I, I said, can I, re, can I have a go at re-editing this scene? And he went, yeah, go ahead. And, and I did it. And he, and he said to me afterwards, yeah, that was fine. I like that. We'll have that. Mm -hmm. and he, it, so he didn't, he was just like, if that's better, fine. So Pre precious was the word I was looking for. Yeah. Not at all precious. That's a yeah. better word. Judy, you, you've worked with Stephen. Uh, I think this is your fourth film with him, isn't it? It is. It is uh, a, and my so fourth. You're, you're familiar with. Yes, and he gets uh, m more and more monosyllabic. Mm. And now he, ha he hardly speaks at all, really. He just looks, <laughs> and you see him standing. And then at the end, when he says cut, uh, there's a kind of shorthand now that I know with him. And, 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 and there's a pause, and he says, do you want to go again? And then you know that that is he wants to go again. There's no question about it. That's when he wants you to do another, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And he says, do you want to do another? And I go, and you sort of shrug your shoulders, and I go, I'm, well, well, I don't know if you want. And he'd say, I'm, I'm not bothered. And he'd say, let's do another, let's do another. Um, but I think he would often want to do another when it was a scene that was actually working well, just because he was enjoying it and wanted to see us do it oh, again. Yes, I, All that, and I And I did see... <coughs> the one thing I'm pleased I dug my heels in 
was, um, he doesn't like me bringing this up, but I'm going to, is the scene where you, I remember that I met him, because Martin actually, this is based on truth, I said to Martin when I was interviewing him, I said, how did you know when you traced him? In actual fact, he saw the name Michael Hess and it rang a bell with him. And he said, why? I said, why? how do you know? He said, I remember the name from my Washington days as, uh, as um, uh, being on White House uh, notepaper and press releases. I remember the name, Michael Hess. And I, he said, uh, so, I said, so could you have been in the White House when he was there? I said, he said, yes. I said, could you have met him? He said, yes, certainly. I said, so you could have shaken his hand? He said, yes. I went, great. We'll use that. And, and the scene with you, uh, yeah. in the morning, Stephen came up to me and said, so the scene where I say, oh, I shook his hand. What was his handshake like? What was his, you know, what did he say hello? All that stuff, which is ostensibly on paper. He said, this scene isn't about anything. I want to cut it. And I said, it's really important we keep the scene. He went, well, it's, he said, it's not about anything. It's just, did you meet him? I shook his hand. Hello. Hi. What does it mean? <laughs> and we shot the scene. At the end of the day, he looked and he had tears in his eyes. And he said, well, who knew that was going to happen? And I said, <laughs> I said, that, I said that's the way we wrote it. I said, he said, I said, you wanted to cut that scene this morning. And he went, but that's before I knew what it was about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask one last question, and, and, and it's this. Since the film has opened, there have been other real-life Philomenas who have you know, uh, come out, as it were, and there's been an, this extraordinary reaction about how many, how many people in her, in, you know, in her position have been you know, bottling up the, uh, these secrets for, for years and years and years. I mean, have you been surprised by the, the extent of, the, of that reaction? I think that... It was her great concern about it, wasn't it? And I think there's a certain... Well, I think definitely there's a, she has a certain sense of relief now that she has told the story and kind of expiated all that and somehow feels that it might... There's a lot of other people it might help in some other way. Yeah, she, has a, she, got, she has a lightness about her, which is, <coughs> is, is obvious that this burden that she carried has, just, yes. has, 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 has gone away. So that, that's, the, that's the positive part of her story, is that she's now unshackled from this dark secret. Thank you very much indeed. Please show your appreciation to our guests. <laughs>